Good morning. Welcome back to the Finca. It's a bit cooler today, thank goodness. Yes, that, that, our heat wave is. Um, it's past. Well, the first one. The first one, passed. although we're expecting uh, another More. one imminently. But for now, we've got a bit of a respite this morning. Yes, it is summer in southern Spain. It's always hot. Um, we get temperatures low to mid 30s, generally yeah. 90s. 90s um, every day for the next sort of month or so. But it's manageable. She's lovely, yes. But when it's ridiculous, 40 and over, it's um, too much. Anyway, so yes, whilst uh, we've got a bit of cloud yeah. this morning, I'm going to get the courtyards done, cleaned, because I don't know whether you can see on camera, but we've got this puppy here. She's always pinching logs and twigs and then just got, chews them up right, everywhere. Right now. Yes, she hey. brought that back from a walk this morning. Um, and just choose it and there's debris everywhere um, down the lower courtyard that's always full of the bits off the oleander tree at this time of the year um, so that desperately needs sweeping so yeah a bit of cloud cover a bit cooler so that's me take the opportunity yes yes and i'm going to see if i can if you saw the previous video of that shelf we've got on the landing up in the hay loft um, i'm going to see if i can transfer that into a a nice piece of furniture, yes. a nice piece of useful furniture. Yes. So, crack on. Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. This is the shelf in question. Um, that's the entrance door to the apartment. Um, eventually when we're downstairs, if people are staying up here, friends or whatever, that's the way they'll come in through there. It's quite a nice shelf to have, just here for things. Um, as you can imagine, it, it does accumulate stuff. So I want to put some doors on it, put some sides on it, put a nice top on it, uh, make it into a, a, a nice feature up here rather than just a a cheap shelf unit. Right, okay, so this is the thing in question. Uh, cheap as chips, flimsy as you like. Um, what I want to do, I want, this is going to be the front. I want to frame it off using the off cuts left over from the trims I did in the hay loft upstairs. I'm going to do the left tender. Um, I want one across the bottom. This one, I'll probably be able to rip down to go across the top that and then this one is just long enough for me to cut in half and run up each side when i do it i'm gonna overlap it and if you can see it'll try an overlap it a little bit like so so when i put my cladding on the side it'll sit nicely up to this the back is it going to be against the wall i'm just going to leave that a nice straight cladded edge and then I'm going to clad the back as well. And then make sure the doors to hang off this. The idea with this timber as well being heavier is to hang the doors off. So I'll have a nice solid frame on the front. Um, it'll, it'll unfold. So the first thing I want to do, I think, is um, get this one cut and stuck on the bottom. And where's the other one gone? Lost it already. Get this one ripped down. It's a taper, but I'm just going to start at the thickest side, um, make it as wide as I can to go up there. So I'll get the saws out. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to cut the bottom piece. I've just taken the, the tongue off it. I'm going to cut it. 20 millimeters longer than the actual width because my cladding is nine so that'll give me 10 sticking out of the cladding i should sit nicely behind it um, the width of it is 75 centimeters 75 705 millimeters so if i do it at 725 that'll give me what i need we got this bit cut.
That's my bottom piece. Now I'm going to cut the top piece exactly the same length. I'm going to cut it from the widest end so that will give me the widest bit down here. So I'm going to get that one cut. So this is the piece I cut off those skirtings. It's cut at an angle because the skirt is at an angle to chamfer them off. So I need to take that off flush and I also need to take off this tongue and hopefully that will give me a reasonable width piece that will look all right at the top of there. this one down a bit because it's got a bit of um, lines off the saw off it and then we'll get the nail gun I'll fire the compressor up while I do this so when I've done it it'll be fired up and ready to go again we're not going mad we wanted a bit of stick we don't mind a bit of unevenness on it Right, I'm just checking my overlap here. It's correct. It's very good. Um, and you, it's about 37 millimeters through this. I'm using 35 mil nails, and I want to put them through from the back. This is going to be easier said than done. So it comes all the way through this piece and nearly all the way through that piece. If I do it from the front. I'm getting less into my thinner piece of wood, if that makes sense. So we'll have a go. You know what? It helps if you put the nails in, doesn't it? <laughs> right, we'll try that again. You can tell when the nails are in because the thing doesn't push the end doesn't push right down. There we go. Right, the other side. Right, so there we go. I'm not overly concerned about it being square at the minute because I've still got some flexibility in that. I will square it up fully when I come to do the back and that will hold it square. I've kind of got it more or less where I want it. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure it is square, but I don't need to be too super concerned just yet. So now I'm going to put these pieces down the sides here and then we're rocking and rolling. This is the exact kind of fit that we want. It's called exact. Absolutely perfect joint there. Super. It's important to get your cuts accurate. Super accurate. So there we go. Same principle. I've just squared it up now actually because we're putting these extra pieces in. It might just make a difference. To square anything up you can either put it on a square table or to just measure across the corners. They should be the same. If they are, it's square. If they're not, it isn't. Basically. <laughs> I've got the other one in. There we go, that's the frame for the doors done. Now I don't know what to do next. I'll probably do the back, I think. Um, 
Yeah, we'll do the back next. So there we go, there's the lower courtyard. Doesn't that look better? It was absolutely covered in bits of, also from Tilly's chewing, um, but mainly from this oleander tree, which is very beautiful, but does cause us an awful lot of mess. Um, on the other hand, <laughs> the upper courtyard, and as you can see, there's just bits of twig everywhere. So I'm going to crack on with that now. Right, so we've just squared it up, we've turned it over, we measured across these corners, they're exactly the same. This edge is flush with there, I've measured this distance at both sides, it's the same. I've got two clamps on there, I've got a clamp on the bottom, it can't move. Well, it can a little bit, but not enough to put it out of square. Um, I've put one in here, but I can't get one in, so we'll just leave it as it is, it doesn't matter. Wonderful, right, we'll get the back done. So I need 10 pieces for the back and I'm going to get two out of one length, a little bit left over. I'll get one of the sides out unfortunately, it's not quite long enough to get both out. That's the way it works out sometimes. Um, so I'll get the rest of these cut and then we'll get them fixed in place. I'm actually going to glue and nail these in place, cut it to the back to hold it super rigidly square. I'll switch to 18 gauge nails, shorter nails. I'm just going to line them up. Again, two nails in them, but I'll get the next one in before I nail it, just to make it a bit easier. And um, I'll carry on, get them done. Get a back on it. So with the back done, I'm going to leave the clamps on until these are dry. I'm going to get the top two. I'll get the start on the sides anyway. piece of timber as well. <laughs> That's it. And there. Right, I shall um, leave that for a little minute, let this set and then we'll get the sides done. Right, that's one side done. Remove the clamps now. I want to remove these obviously. Flip it over and we can do the other side. This is of course getting heavier. Okay, I'll get it done. Right now, so that's in the main part done. Um, this is when you find out you've not quite got enough wood to do the doors. <laughs> I'm that much short, would you believe it? I've got it in off cut, so I think what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use this piece because I'll need a thin piece on each door ripped down to give us the width that we need. 
I'm going to use this piece and then add another little piece on top sort of there and then put the hinge over get a hinge that'll cover that joint um, I don't really want to spend another 20 euros on another pack of wood just for that um, and I don't need any right now and I, I can't envisage me needing any for a while so we'll do a bit of jiggery pokery and um, figure that one out but yeah it's um, pretty good so far I've got the top I've got a solid piece to go on the top um, so yeah it's, uh, I think I'll do the doors next well, that's that one done. Looks a lot better. I've got a little collection of Tilly's toys on the table that I've spent half an hour picking up. Um, yeah, just rubbish really. We bought her a very expensive nylon bone when she was teething. She doesn't touch it at all. She just likes plastic bottles, bits of rope, uh, twigs. She's got half a dozen bits of bone left over. So anyway, it's done. I'm ready now for a nice cold beer. I know. So, I've cut the ledges. They'll fit on each side the exact same width as the doors, like that. Now I'm going to cut the, the lengths. Um, I think I need three, three full lengths for each door and then a little bit on the part. So I'll get them cut first. Right up. So I've got these loosely laid out um, to make sure that with my extra short piece that I'm going to have to piece on. I've left a tongue on that. Um, I've got several grooves out there to join onto it so I need to cut this one so that one will slot in there and this side will slot in here if that makes sense but the first thing I need to do is take the groove off this side and the tongue off that one um, to then give me a nice clean edge and then I'll know how wide I need to cut this piece so that's the next job doing one at a time actually so groove off this one the width I need there now the tongue off this one right so I've got this one squared up measured across the corners remember um, I've got it clamped to the bench now so I can take these remove these two I'm going to glue them and nail them I'm going to cut the last ones after when we've got these exactly in place um, so get the compressor fired up as long as this one doesn't move, I can line them back up to it, get a bit of glue on, stick them in. So when those two done, I can now do this end one and then repeat the process on the other door. Double check it again for being square because while the glue is still wet, 
I've got a little bit of movement in it, sure I need it. That looks pretty good to me. I'm actually going to finish this door off completely before I do the other one. Um, I've got a tongue on this end, I've got a groove on this end, it's right across the ledge. So I'm going to stick him in. Easier said than done as always. mark it on the back where I want to cut it because it's tongue and groove you've got to allow for the tongue or the groove where they fit inside each other so I can put a mark on and I can actually physically measure it um, from this edge um, and put that up against the guide of the saw so I get it cut exactly where I want it so there we go, lovely um, all I've got to do now is cut this to the length I want it and so I'll mark it and then when I fix them on my hinge will cover that line there you won't be able to see it that's the plan anyway I'm sure this side's alright yeah right I'll cut that one and we'll get this one finished off so a bit of glue on there a bit of glue on there I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the tongue because that's only got one bit of holes in it. I'm going to then glue it to the tongue and um, it should be alright. So, get it nailed. Super. Well, have a good look. There we go, one door done, ready. We'll get the other one done now, same procedure. There we go. Two doors, yeah, just waiting for hinges. You have to nip out and get them, of course. Um, but they're ready to go on. Then all that remains is the top. Um, I'm going to put the doors on. I'm going to take it upstairs um, because it's going to be sat. There's a skirting board me away from the wall. I want the top kind of up to the wall, so I'm going to position the top um, when it's in place, basically, and just fix it on after. So hinges next. Before I put the final bits together, um, someone's given it a coat of linseed oil. Um, we can leave it overnight then, so when it comes to get the hinges on tomorrow and get the lid fitted, it should all be dry and um, looking alright. Right, the oil's taken nicely. Um, it's looking rather nice. We'll show you it in its full glory shortly. Um, I'm going to get the doors on next. I'm just going to fix the hinges to the doors. I'll put the doors back to back. So I get the hinges in exactly the same place on each door. And um, I get these on and then we'll get them fitted. As you can see, these hinges absolutely cover that joint perfectly, which is what we wanted to achieve. And then, last one, this. I'm just 
just going to put this piece of timber through there to support the doors in the middle. Sit them on there. and get the lid on it. Right, I've just got the level on and just going to mark out for the knobs. I'm just going to measure them across there just to make sure we'll get them on. Right, so these knobs generally come with um, a bolt you can cut down. So I've drilled the old suit, I've cut it down, I've taken one notch off it. And just screw them on. Go. Put a little bolt on the bottom of this door. I don't know why, but we had one. change these for black ones like we said we preferred but they'll do for now. There we go, same position. Um, I'm just going to glue this top on I think. Just put a bit of weight on it to hold it. Um, rather than having screws sticking out of the top. Seems simple enough and easy enough so I've got the glue. Stick it on. I've got a good, pretty good surface area to glue to as well. Get the top of the glue. It'll never come off again, Mike, but it should never need to. <laughs> from last year we're going to put on it and um, yeah excellent we go smashing stray something there we'll just leave that to go off now and um, get some stuff in it well our lovely cupboard is in situ I'm so thrilled um, <laughs> I love recycling or upcycling I suppose it is so I'm even more thrilled that we've managed yeah. to use that old set of shelves and put it to good use. Um, Total cost about 35 euros, um, lasts for a decade and a great addition to any entrance <laughs> hall. <laughs> yeah, first put a nice vase of flowers or something on the top eventually but for now the uh, big dish from my halogen oven and full of almonds, well not full of almonds but plenty of almonds in there it's quite heavy to keep that top in situ until the glue goes off so yeah so that's it for this time guys i hope you've enjoyed yes. the video hope yes. you found it interesting and informative andy's creative ability once again <laughs> um, perfect project on a hot 
hot weather, do it inside. Absolutely, do it inside, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all our subscribers, all our Patreons, everybody that's bought us a coffee. Couldn't do it without you. And we'll see you next see you time. See you next time.